All right, this next unit is going to be on conic sections, so I want to take some time getting us ready for conic sections. So there are four conic sections, the circle, parabola, ellipse, and hyperbola. They're called conic sections because they are the shape that you get when you intersect a plane with this double cone uh, at various angles. For instance, when the plane intersects a cone and that plane is parallel to the base of the cone, that's when we get a nice circle. But as soon as that plane is tilted just a little bit, then that circle gets elongated and it becomes an ellipse. For a parabola, the picture really doesn't do it justice, but if we continue to rotate that plane until it's parallel with the edge of the cone, that's when we'll get the parabola so that the edge of the cone should be uh, parallel to the edge of our plane. Finally, if we let that plane become perpendicular to the base of the cone, that's when we'll get, it looks like two parabolas, uh, but they are some, in some very technical ways different. Uh, but when we have those two branches, that's going to be called the hyperbola. In order to get ready to deal with all of those conic sections, we have to get a little practice in uh, as far as the algebra side of things go. And one thing that we have to be good at is completing the square. So just as a reminder, to complete the square, when we have a quadratic like x squared plus 10x, and we want to add a certain constant to complete the square, we take half of this middle term, 10, and then square it. So we'll get 25. The result of that would be x plus 5 the quantity squared. That's why we call it completing the square. So when we have x squared minus 16x plus blank, we take that negative 16, cut it in half for a negative 8. So that will turn into negative 8. And then square that negative 8 to get our constant term of 64. Notice, of course, that would be x minus 8, the quantity squared. That minus 8 is now right here. And when we have an odd number, like plus 7 in the middle, x squared plus 7x plus, take half of that 7, which would be 7 halves, and then square it for 49 fourths. That's going to be a lot more useful than 3.5 squared, all right? Uh, but, of course, that result is x plus 7 halves squared. How we're going to utilize completing the square is in a problem similar to this, writing in the form y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So if we have y equals 2x squared minus 4x minus 20, and we want to put it in that form, uh, we need to kind of get things in order. So the very first thing I'm going to do is to separate that constant outside. Uh, when we do that, now I've got that plus k kind of off to the side. That's not where our final k is going to be. We're going to want to complete the square on this portion of it, but we can't do that yet either because we have a leading coefficient. Out of that part, I'm going to factor out the 2. Then I'll have x squared minus 2x. And that 20 is still separated. You notice that I left this little space here. That's because this is where we're going to complete the square. And when we complete the square, x squared minus 2x plus blank, remember, take half of that minus 2, which would be negative 1, and square it. So we have plus 1. Now, don't just jump right into calling that the, the square that it is, uh, because we currently just changed our equation. We added that 1 inside of the parentheses. So we're going to have to balance that out by taking some off. We just added a bunch, we're going to have to take some off as well. So I have to subtract just as much as I added. And it looks like I added 1, but remember, I didn't. Because this 2 is 2 times 1. So I really added 2 right there, which means I have to subtract 2 as well to keep everything uh, in balance. But now, we, we can write it in the right form. I have that 2 out in front. Everything in parentheses is a perfect square. It's x minus 1 squared. And then the constant term that's outside of those parentheses, negative 20 minus 2, that ends up being the k that we want. 
And that's how we can use uh, completing the square to get it in the right form. So let's try another one. Here we have x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 10y minus 66 equals 0. And we want to put it in this form, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the first thing that stands out to me is how our form has all the x's collected together and all the y's are collected together. So when I'm rewriting this, I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to take all the x's and collect them together. So we'll have x squared plus 6x. Then I'm also going to collect all of my y's together. So we'll have y squared minus 10y. As far as that 66 is concerned, it doesn't have an x in it, doesn't have a y in it, so I'm going to bring it over to the other side of the equation. Now we can complete the square on each piece. For the x's, we take half of that 6 and square it, so we'll have plus 9. And for the y's, we take half of that negative 10 and square it, so we'll have plus 25. Remember, we just added a bunch to the left side of this equation. In order to balance it out, we should add just as much to the other side of the equation as well. So I should also add 9 and add 25. All right, now I have some perfect squares on the left side. For these x's, that's going to be x plus 3 squared. And for the y's, it's y minus 5 squared. And adding everything up on the right-hand side, we get 100. Now we have it in the form that we want. 